25,000 European citizens die every year because of antimicrobial resistance. But by 2050, antimicrobial resistance could kill more people than cancer. Joining me in the studio today to discuss how to defeat antimicrobial resistance is Europe's Commissioner for Health, Vitanis Andriukaitis. Commissioner, you're very welcome. You have an action plan for AMR, antimicrobial resistance. How is Europe going to deal with this huge issue? As you mentioned, terrible figures. And of course, it's very painful because of not all citizens in the EU do, not, do understand it. If you look at awareness uh, figures, you know how many people are worried about. The, the figures show that uh, awareness of European Union citizens is very low. But if you look at possibilities to, to, to uh, encourage member states and all actors to be together and to act against antimicrobial resistance, of course, you need to have antimicrobial action plan. And why we did it? Because we have one before. It's, it's, it is the second uh, um, action plan against antimicrobial resistance, but it was built on, on, on previous experience. But this one shows uh, opportunity to join forces in three sectors, A human sector, animal sector, and environmental sector. Innovation is we just incorporate also environmental sector together and we presented very, very detailed action plan uh, showing responsibility of all actors, all operators and showing possibilities to manage uh, process, to coordinate and of course to measure progress. Otherwise, it will be a really challenging issue. If 25,000 Europeans died every year because of terrorism, this would be on our headlines every single day. Why is AMR not at the top of uh, government's national priorities? It's true that we have no headlines about that. But, uh, but if, if you look at a general picture of public health concerns, you have no headlines that everywhere we are uh, losing one point five million people because of uh, non-communicable diseases of course including antimicrobial resistance and now no one is scared about why i don't know maybe we are far from the understanding that public health instruments are so important to stop amenable and avoidable deaths if I may, once again, to stress, amenable and avoidable deaths. And deaths from uh, resistance bacteria is, once again, avoidable deaths. Why we need to, 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 to encourage member states. And, of course, some member states show very big responsibility. Germany, for example, Chancellor Angela Merkel raised those issues at G7 level, then at WHO level, then at G20 level. And in, in, in Berlin, we have, we have a meeting with G20 countries discussing possibilities how to present our common uh, action plan and, of course, also including our positions uh, in, into the United Nations resolution. It was, it was done at, 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 at uh, international level uh, uh, well. But, of course, we need to encourage member states' governments and heads of states and governments to be more vocal. You can understand why the average citizen doesn't really get this. It's a slow-moving plan and it's a slow-moving disease system as well. They know somebody who went to hospital and didn't come out because they got an infection hospital, but they don't see 25,000 people on the radar. National governments get this, healthcare practitioners get this as well. So why is there not this, this great urgency uh, to protect human life and to reduce uh, public budgets as well? Surely that's one of the great incentives for, for governments under pressure and a time of austerity. First of all, na national parliaments must understand it. Governments understand it. Of course, also, it will be good to know uh, that, uh, that it's good cooperation between so-called health practitioners. I uh, would like to mention both health medical doctors and veterinarians. How to join their forces at member states level, at local level, at community level, understanding that they are health practitioners. Our 
antimicrobial action plan calls one a health approach. It means that veterinarians and medical uh, workers, doesn't matter, doctors or nurses, they must be in, in line together and their responsibility is to raise awareness, to analyze situation, and of course also to, to educate people. And this element of education, it's, there are old style methods of, of hospital hygiene, of veterinary hygiene as well. And do you see vested interests within Europe from the chemical companies who don't want to see a change, who don't want to uh, adapt to the, the approach that's been taken at the moment? Or is this simply a lack of education in, in veterinary schools and in uh, medical schools as well. How, how do you really want to get this message across? I have no one uh, single recipe to say, because, but it's a very complex one. Of course, no very well. Some industries are very keen and very dedicated to present new, for example, new uh, rapid diagnostic devices, to develop new vaccines, to uh, ask member states, governments, to be more active in research and development, to cooperate. Some are not. Some are very happy with, with, with old types of, of antibiotics and, and old types of, of thinking. Okay, they are not, not, not so keen. Because the same picture is speaking about uh, our uh, high schools. In some high schools, it's, it's very high on the agenda. Some are so, so you know, so far from. And, and of course, the same speaking about, about uh, practitioners. But I see very, very, you know, very mixture of, of, of situation. And of course also, you know, that some uh, uh, practitioners are under big pressure of, of, uh, of society to prescribe antibiotics. It is very difficult to, when you are uh, discussing issues with general practitioners in some countries. They will tell you stories in which they are in so difficult to, to, uh, to encourage their patients to believe that it's not, it's not necessary now to use antibiotics because it's, it's, it's uh, old stereotypes that antibiotics must be used if you have temperature you must immediately ask doctor or they are ready to prescribe to the antibiotics and and it is so complex issue and what what I, uh, I, I would like to draw your attention to what it is very important to have common pan-european antibiotic awareness days and weeks not only days, but weeks. And of course also we encourage member states to, to use uh, all uh, instruments at, 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 at the time of those weeks to disseminate messages. Of course NGOs must act in more synergetic way, uh, industry also, otherwise it will be very difficult to change paradigm in the society. The, the paradigm doesn't really shift too quickly, but the headlines that, uh, that most countries will get, and I see this across Europe, is that particularly during the winter, the number of deaths in hospitals increases dramatically. And part of that is not just to do with antibiotic prescription, but uh, best practice inside the hospitals in terms of, of hygiene process as well. Now, if uh, you were in the pharmaceutical industry and you, pr you produced a drug which caused people to die because you weren't careful enough with the, the application of it, or the car industry and you didn't follow best practice and there was a problem uh, and somebody died as a consequence of that, it goes straight to court and there's a huge amount of money paid out. Why are our hospitals not now liable for the deaths of their patients when they know that there's a best practice for the reduction of antimicrobial resistance? Our hospitals uh, have good opportunity to disseminate good practices between them and within them. And they are following this, uh, high hygiene rules and of course, you know, sometimes they are, they are, they are promoting a lot of, of, of initiatives, but you know, it's very, very difficult to develop network of cooperation, network of, of exchanges of best practices. Of course, we can do it using our uh, health program, inviting actors to, 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 to present their uh, uh, achievements. And we uh, have uh, winners, we, we just uh, in a way to, to, to establish a pan-European award uh, to, to those who are very advanced in the area of, of, of 
awareness campaigns and so on. But uh, <clears throat> as you know, it's always not enough. We need to be very uh, brave promoting one health approach. It's not only about hospitals. Changing the mindset completely. Yes, but of course also, can you uh, see figures, how many people, especially in some uh, periods of age, from, 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 from 60 till 80, will be uh, vaccinated against in, uh, simple uh, influenza? And then you see consequences. Pandemias, hospitalization, infections uh, are there, and then you can use antibiotics, and then you have deaths because of, of a lot of complications and because of resistant bacteria. And how to encourage our society to understand that vaccination is a real instrument, it's workable instrument preventing influenza and of stopping uh, uh, avoidable death. The risk of a pandemic and the capacity for innovation to solve this problem. First of all, are you concerned that Europe and, and the world will see a pandemic arising out of superbugs? And secondly, how do you see Europe's innovation capacity to solve this problem? Generally, we should be proud about European Union uh, activities supporting innovative uh, approaches and innovative decisions. Can you imagine how many money was dedicated through Horizon 2020 uh, uh, supporting innovative medicine initiatives? It's, it's more than one billion euros. Only two, uh, two, two issues related to uh, possibilities to synthesize new type of antibiotics. It was dedicated more than 700 million euros. It's the pipeline for this is slow as well. Uh, yes, of course, no doubt. But, but because, it's, because it is science, because it is clinical trials, because it is a responsibility, and because it's very high risk to succeed to have new types of, of antibiotics, of course. But in those five years, we just now, in a way, to have five new types uh, of uh, antibiotics. It it's, it's shows results. Of course, very important issue is a rapid diagnostic uh, devices. Because you need to have in 10 minutes to, to answer it is a virus or, or bacteria. Uh, using biomarkers, it's very important to, to have such, such, um, such um, uh, devices at primary practitioner's level. And you need, of course, to ask industry to be more innovative. And, but we are, in a way, in a very, very, very good way to, to stimulate those, those initiatives. But, of course, speaking about, about capacities at member states level, not all member states uh, level uh, member states have the same capacities. You know, some are richest and they have m more instruments to, this, to facilitate. This... Some are poorest and they have a lot of difficulties. But yet, the the problem will spread across Europe. Should we reach a, a level of pandemic in the future yes, as well? Of course, no doubts. We need to have pan-European mechanisms. Why we are in, in 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 line to strengthen our health security committee and of course also to strengthen uh, uh, capacities of European Centre for Disease Con uh, Prevention and Control. Because we Do need you think it's better to speak about this in terms of health security rather than in health prevention? Yes, both. In, ter in terms of health security and health uh, and prevention, uh, we need to draw member states' attention that they must dedicate public money, resources, human resources, and of course also they must be ready to have preparedness programs. Otherwise, it will be difficult to address this. Final word on this. Your message to national governments, what should they do now? Please act now. Why? Because if we are not ready now to have till, till end of 2018 to have Nation, at national level, new antimicrobial action plans, which will be compatible with pan-European action plan, then we will lose time and people's lives. We can act now. Commissioner, thank you.